Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bottles of Bricks, Missing Echo. Uh, this is the first chapter in a uh, unique series that I'm, I want to start introducing into the show as something, as a companion to the, 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 the regular podcast in between episodes of HBO's show. And uh, tonight, uh, I brought Sam and Joel into the mix to talk about a fan favorite character of mine that I'd like to dive a little deep into it and see what we think about them. Um, Sam, Joel, thanks for joining me. Yeah, I appreciate you for having us, man. Cool. Yeah, no problem. Uh, folks, we're going to talk about Tess. We're going to talk about one of the most badass characters forget not just female but just characters in general that i wish we gotten more of and yeah we're going to talk about the um similarities differences of what we got in the game and in the show now for those who aren't familiar with it and i'm going to let you know right now that we are going to talk spoilery stuff of the game and in the show so if you don't want to know all this stuff, go check out the episodes thus far released and catch up with the game because there's no way to have the discussion, brainstorm discussion, and if we can't have the chains, if you will, off. Tess first appeared in the um, in the first game in 2003. She first appeared there, and she was played by the great Annie Worshing. Um. She's a TV actress mostly that I've known her. I think right now she's doing uh, Picard on Star Trek, so I'm happy she's she's got some work stuff done. But she created character along with Neil Druckmann, and not only did she play her in the game, she also played her in the One Night Live event where most of the cast of the video game performed scenes uh, in front of an audience with the score, a live performance score of Gustavo Santolaya. And I, how do I start this off? She, between the, the duality of her and Joel, she's the leader. She runs the shop and Joel's the muscle. And that's a, a fascinating dynamic in this world. And um, unfortunately, she meets her demise in the game and in the show. Uh, but in the game, she goes off shooting federal soldiers and um i what's weird is that i always my benchmark of like what i, I love about like cool characters specifically female ones it's always been leia and ripley it's always been the benchmark for me of my style and tess goes into that route in a different unique uh, uh circumstances but um let me start off with you and sam and Jorel. did you both take to tess immediately or you know how heartbroken were you when shit went down and what were your, what was your experience with uh, the character in the game? Yeah. Um, I'll preface it like this, just to ex explain how I feel about Tess. That's how I'll kind of start this off. Um, when I first played the game, right. And, you know, I, I already empathized for what Joe went through. And so I was like, oh, okay, Joe has somebody, but I was like, she's a, she's a cutthroat like mm -hmm. <laughs> she's not kind of company that you kind of like oh yeah that's wifey there like no like she gets stuff done and she's not afraid to kill manipulate or run somebody down like you know that 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 one person you call the ride or die she's that yeah and in spades that's that's the impression i got from her playing the game especially playing the game when i was playing the game and that was one of the things that was very different from the game and the show is kind of like, you know, when we first see her, she's already been beaten up, you know, and she kind of goes and gets kidnapped, you know, well, not kidnapped, but detained by Fedra. She goes back to Joe's like, yeah, she was kind of sizing him up. Yeah, we're going to go back and get our stuff. But I was like, in the game, yo, they go through, they run through folks like <laughs> you, get, mm -hmm. you get a very strong impression of who these two individuals are for sure but more than anything her like she like ronan says she's the shot caller like she's yeah. like yeah nah put him in the grave like nah yeah let's let's get my money you know and <laughs> i i like that attitude about her but the thing that was very fascinating i think that's about everybody in this 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 series or this franchise 
is there's layers to them. You don't really understand or comprehend who they really are um, until either one, they have an extreme turning point that something traumatic happens or two, they inevitably die. Um, and kind of like with the game, it was kind of like she, man, she, she was a, <laughs> she was a beast. Mm -hmm. right? But her untimely demise was felt really lackluster to me. Like the way she went out, it was cool, but it was like it's kind of like this off camera thing. It's like, yeah, she's dead, and I was like, man, I wish she would have like you know would have had a little bit more. Whereas with the, the the show, they show all the different facets and layers to her, like certain small layers of dialogue, like when she said something along the lines to Joe at her passing, like, I never asked you to feel the way I felt yeah. um, when she was having interactions with Ellie. I felt like those were really honed in a lot more that Ellie had somebody, not only that she was like, oh, wow, this chick is awesome. Like, she kind of looked at her as a maternal figure. More so than when I was playing the game, I was like, I was like, eh, she's cool. Like, these three are going to be a interesting bunch but i never looked at tess as a mother figure ever and i think the approach of the the show showed this other side to Tess that i'd never perceived even when i played the game um i guess we're going to talk about it that neil brought up you know some of her backstory so let's save that for a bit so i want to hear about first. Yeah, yeah 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 but so that plays off to, to the hbo version uh, right compared to what we got but um Right. Jarrell, what do you think of what the great Annie Wershing, or Annie Hershing, she said, I feel like I'm butchering her name, but what she what Annie did with Tess in the game? Uh in the game, um hmm. I, in the game alone, I, I thought Tess was uh, was a great character. Uh and a, and a very memorable um character, particularly with the her um send-off. Um which is weird because he, I don't know. Even though we spend a lot of time with Tess, like we don't really like know that much about her. It's weird. It's, there's right. almost like a, a like a Christopher Nolan um, Dunkirk effect, like the way that he treats his characters in that film. There's a very similar effect in The Last of Us, at least in the game, where it's like it's like we do know them, but like like we don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, we know them in a very uh, I don't know. It's almost like a spiritual level, but not like like a technical level. Like I, I couldn't tell you what Joel was like, fucking you know, before the pandemic. Not like in excruciating detail. And this is very intentional, you know. So um, I don't know. It's an interesting relationship to have with these characters. But no, and Tess in the video game, uh, I thought she was great. She was. Um, I guess if I had to describe her in short, just like badass and haunting for sure yeah great character i yeah i think she was she she they went out of the way to be like they want to strive that she has an element of strength and aggression i think you said it best sam that like she's possibly more willing to do darker stuff and cutthroat than joel and the fact that she's the one doing the talking and whatnot and a little fun fact for everybody, and I don't know if you fellas know this, but in the game, she initially, early early on in development, was supposed to be the main antagonist of the game. Did you guys know that? I've heard it, but no. I never got the backstory or the, the process either. Yeah. yeah, I'd never heard this before, no. Yeah, uh, she, uh, from from concept art that I just showed and other stuff, she, it was very, very early on that I was like, all right, she's going to be the bad guy. She wasn't going to be tagging along with Joe and, and Ellie, which I think would have been fascinating switch and maybe something more personal with who Joe would be facing off at the end. But um, that's a cool little backstory um, that when I first heard that, I'm like, what? And instead of you know, you know, Marlene being the antagonist, it was going to be Tess who was going to be the one barrier at the very end of the game. I found that very, very fascinating. Um, and uh, yeah, so I I can't stress how much 
Yes, I think you guys said it. it, it I, to me, it, it's been the word subtle. Subtle, very close to the chest of knowing what these characters are or where they're from, and yet still us connecting to them and us still caring for them. And that's a very hard line to walk and even harder thing to execute and have people respond to said characters or events. Um, but she didn't just stay in video game, folks. She made the leap as well to live action when she appeared in the HBO sheer in the HBO in the HBO series played by Anna Torf. Uh, Anna, I know she's in what Fringe, Mindhunter, I believe, and um, she at points got the cutthroat, you know, slick, cool spirit of Taz that I knew from the game. And at some point, she had this vibe of she was way more hopeful than Joel could ever be yeah. without the following events that would occur to Joel. And you said it, Sam, that like the 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 the, the maternal side. I, I felt I, I in hindsight, when I finished the game, I felt like oh she would have been a great mom to Ellie, I think. I thought. And I think that in the in the show they showcase that when she tells him, damn, you got some balls on you, sister. And Ellie just smirks and like smiles. She's like, age? Hey, yeah. She she looks up to her. She's studying her. She's almost not, not mimicking, but almost doing what, what she's doing. But if she had more time, I would not doubt it that Ellie would have looked to Tess as a stepmother or, or, or uh, um, a surrogate mother to you know teach her about how to survive in this world yeah. and just be her. Be here without any push off. Um, Joel, how did you take what Anna uh, um, presented to us in the series? Um, hmm. it's interesting because I, I, I did, I loved Fringe, or I loved, I well, I loved Fringe and her in it, and same with uh, Mindhunter, uh, which why why we never got another season, I don't know, but. Uh, that's painful. But um, what did I think? That's a damn good question. Cause like, I don't really know. I mean, for me, it's like a lot of like what we saw in the show was like rushed. And like, I didn't feel like I had like in it weirdly in a different, at least in this medium, the way that they used her anyways. Um, she just felt rushed and kind of just like, Kind of like this random character with the spectacular end. That's kind of how she came across in the show, which is intriguing because in the game, it's like the to total fucking opposite, you know, especially when you're going through thick and thin with Tess and then the rug gets pulled out from underneath you. And you're just like, oh shit. Which when they try to do this in the, in the show, they're moving at like 200, 200 miles per hour in the show compared to the game. So, like, um, in the show, it just, it just doesn't, just doesn't hit the same way. But, um, uh, I do like that they chose someone that, like, you know, I've had respect for and enjoy. Right on, right on. Um, Sam, what about you? Um, for me, this is the weird thing. And to be fair, her perform performance was fine. <laughs> it wasn't bad. I wouldn't say that her performance was bad, for the record. Okay. Um, for me, this is the weird thing. Like, Tess was always a character that I, from the game, I was like, it's a memorable character. Yeah. Right? Like, regardless of how, I was like, man, she could have went she could have went out better than that. But it's a memorable character. So, exactly. it, it was kind of like, you know, no matter what, you know, this actress was in before, she had some huge shoes to fill anyway. Yeah. I feel like even her and, you know, Luna as Tommy, you know, they had really big shoes to fill because I've not only played the first game, but also, you know, know the impression and the mark that they leave on the whole entirety of the, of the franchise. So, yeah, it was it was it was hard shoes to fill in general. But the fact is that, you know, Tess and I know this is spoiler. This is spoilers yes. died in the second episode um, real quick. And it was a very epic and I think a very superior death for sure. 
But if you literally look at it, Tess was only in half of the first episode, and then she really was in one episode. So it's kind of like if you've never played the game, you know, the actress playing Tess, that's all she had to grab you. That's all the amount of time she had. Because I'm not, I can't base it off of my perception of who the character was in the game. I can only present it as, okay, she had an episode and a half to make an impact. Did she make an impact? I think that the second episode was far superior to her in the first or second half of the first episode, for sure. Um, I think that they did some good groundwork here or there in the first episode, but the second episode was kind of like, it gave me everything. It gave me this impression that she was a previous mom. It gave me this impression that she, she is definitely owning her stuff. What I mean by that is when she had that conversation with Ellie, like, look, you heard, you know, this man right here, he, he's willing to shoot you. I don't really care one way or another. And we're not good people. When she made anybody making a statement like that, they could care less what they've done and they've owned it. And mm-hmm. that's, that's huge. Like from a, from a written standpoint, like a lot of characters, you know, either they're sociopaths or they don't lean into what they really are in their nature. And she leans all the way into it. Um, I think the hard thing is in one episode, there was a lot of different emotions that she had to convey. She had to show she had emotional connection to Ellie and Joe in her own way. She had to show empathy and hope. She had to also show her darkness at times. And I think the interesting thing that I never saw Tess have, at least that I can remember in the game, is fear. When everything went down in the museum, immediately when the clickers started to attack them, her her head went defense of the girl. Like, her head went defense of Ellie. And, a matter of fact, her first shot isn't even on the mark because she's scared. Um, and when I think that Keaton said it before, he kind of like it was telegraphed to him because he was like, she switched up. She seems like she's afraid. And it wasn't so much the fact that she's afraid that she was going to pass. I don't think she really cared about that. It was more so that how is Joel going to navigate getting this girl through this? And so she tried to make up for it by enticing him like she normally does. You got to get this through your skull. Do this. But I think it was the one line of dialogue she said to him. I don't think it was in the game. She was like, that's not my home. And I was like, that's interesting. Because what are you trying to say in that statement? This whole entire time you've been with this man, Joe, like, was that just for convenience? Or was it you were hoping that he would come to some semblance of what of a man that you knew or what he could be? So what I'm saying is that all those different things are going on with just dissection in just that one episode. That is technically a character disservice but it's also a huge effort that was made by the actress and everybody that was behind the writing of it so it's it's hard for me to kind of gauge because i think they did their job like from people that you know have never seen the game they were kind of like oh man i can't believe that was such a great character but for us you know the gamers like man y'all missed a lot (laughs) like there's other levels there's other levels of this she's 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 a g she's she's a cutthroat but um for me, I, I was okay with it because I think that the measures that I wanted or measures that I never got from her in the game, they gave me in this. But the trade-off, yes. the trade-off was we didn't get to see her as the badass that we knew her to be. Exactly. That's 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 the interesting thing. And it's kind of like to Jarrell's point, say we did have like, you know, two episodes with Tess, we would have seen some interesting things with her. Um but it's kind of like how tight would have kind of be as a collective as a season. And again, we can only speak for two episodes, so I can't say much more than that. But exactly what we got that wasn't in the game, I really dug. Yeah. But to me, the way I measured her in terms of like um, capability and strength is that from the get go, she could shoot a place up and make her way on her own and not even bat an eye. Which is why when she shows up all beaten up, she's just like, I just want a whiskey. I just want to drink a little bit. Why not? So I, yeah, I, I miss that a little bit. But also we got in the show that they were a serious thing. Now, whether that was on hold or not, who knows? But like, it was a serious thing. 
Granted, yeah. in the sh- in the the game, it was teased. You know, there's a point when she tells him, "There's enough here for you to feel some sort of obligation to me." And right. at one point, when you're in the gameplay, she's calling him, "Come on, Texas." And at one point, once they're close to reaching, you know, her final destination, she talks about like, "We should go on a date one of these days." And he's joking like, "Ha, you want to go on a date? Like, sure, you will." And she's like, "After this this job, we can settle down for a bit." And I do want to add to that that. Anna Torf ran with it, gave her a moment at moments really honor what Annie did and did her thing. She gave another side to Tess. And I appreciate that. Um, but I do have to say that even if I didn't know the game, I felt like the writing in the second episode, although I dug that episode, it felt like a layup, letting people know she's gonna die. She got bit, and it, it, it's either because of dialogue or the way she, they would sh- cover her, shoot her. And it was just like, this is, if anybody, I would be shocked if someone told me they didn't see it coming. Because in the game, I didn't see it coming. She was just as feisty as she was in the beginning. And then it's almost a sad truth when you realize she's not going with us anymore. And this one, in, it, instantly from the museum sequence, I was like, they're telegraphing it too clear for me or anybody else. So that's what I took away from, from what we got in the um, in the HBO series. But we do know that she's from Detroit, which we never really know in, in the game. That she's from Detroit, which is always a cool nugget. And I might add that um, another podcast, if you will, HBO's official Last of Us podcast, uh, after their episode drops, they do a deep dive for Troy Baker and Craig and Neil. And they do bring up they never shot it, but they had written a more deeper backstory to Tess, which is that she was a mother. She had a son and she was married. And what happened? Both the husband and the son got infected. And that she had to shoot her husband, but she couldn't shoot her son. That she locked him up in a closet and left him there. And that technically speaking, he would still be a clicker or an infected at that point. Yeah. And they apparently they had written a sequence where they were going to open up the episode and it was going to be like a banging door of a closet. And it would reveal later on that Tess told them that like, oh, yeah, I I went I had a dark side to me in my past. So I found that that, that again, a few seconds of this telling us her backstory is so much fascinating because for years, years, I had asked, you know, what would be a good one off DLC? Spend time with Tess before the outbreak. And during the outbreak, before she meets Joel, just to see what kind of characteristic she was individually before she uh, created the duality with, with Joel. And uh, yeah, anytime I get something nugget like that, I find it fascinating. And it, it, look at the, the dynamics. We, we got an unofficial backstory of her from the HBO series. And in early development of the game, she was going to be the bad guy. She was going to be the main baddie. So it's, it's, it's a cool, fun dynamic that I, I find that this character follows her that it follows her throughout these past few years but all i'm gonna say i can't say it because you need to watch more episodes because it's not over with yet let's just say let's leave it at that test servopoulos uh we love you and we thank you for uh breaking our hearts and taking along taking us along with you in this this Small, short, but fascinating journey of this outbreak world. Um, because, folks, we got to talk about something else that is going to be mind bending for this franchise. But for, for tonight, Jorel, Sam, thank you so much for joining me to talk about this fan favorite, well beloved character, uh, Tess. Uh, where can folks find you? Uh, you can find me at Team JVS, where we're doing the non-spoiler reviews for The Last of Us, as well as the live stream, remastered, and a whole heck of a lot of other content that you guys definitely <laughs> want to watch. And I'm going to put this out there just to plug uh, Ronan. If you guys want to not have to wait until the end of the season, maybe Ronan will put this on a Patreon like the uncut <laughs> version of the conversation and you guys can hear it because you probably just like, Oh, what were they talking about? What was this? What, what were they discussing? If you really want to know, check out his Patreon. 
There you go. You say it. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Jarrell. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm on YouTube. You can, uh, Kyle L. Jorel, you can find me at Jorel's Alexandria, like the library of Alexandria. So my YouTube channel, uh, Jorel's Alexandria, um, you can just look that up and you'll find, um, everything you need to know. Beautiful. Folks, all I'll say this, to the edge of the universe and back, endure and survive.